There you have it. That's your lead. He's in Paris. You know, if we say something, they aren't gonna do jack shit. Well, I guess it's just up to us then. I say, what time is it? I think it's time for Arthur and Kenneth to palustrate this sticky wicket. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are weird. Female empowerment in video games is back. Long gone are the days when a male character was the protagonist. Well, I guess we still have that going on, but we see more and more female characters in the front row. And I have been waiting for a very long time for this one. Maybe not particularly this video game. No, I've been waiting for some sort of co-op for Wolfenstein Return to Castle. Because Wolfenstein Return to Castle was the very best from this genre. I absolutely loved it. Bar none, it had things that most recent Wolfensteins just don't have. That feeling, that gunplay, it's reminiscent, but it was, it was very, very good. Is this 2019 Wolfenstein better than the 2001? Well, it's hard to make that decision, it's, and it's hard to put a number on it from 1 to 10. How better is this one, or how greater was that one? I can very much say that the past Wolfensteins, for me, were not that desirable, and they weren't just not that enjoyable. With a small exception when it came to Wolfenstein Old Blood. That one kind of felt a bit the same, just like Wolfenstein Return to Castle but not quite. Again, there was something that Activision did back then with Return of Castle that just, it hasn't been done before. However, ladies and gentlemen, this time around I give you Wolfenstein Youngblood. And this is very much enjoyable. Let's get into it. Five more Zofia, kick. Kick! <sighs> Keep your hands up, again. No, no more, mama. This is how you die. This is the moment they get you. We die because we let them kill us. You will face a big, strong Aryan true believer who can push through pain for one second longer than you do. And that's all it takes. Story. Without any spoilers, because there's hard for me to give you any, so I don't think anyone can actually spoil you the game unless they tell you how it's gonna end, which I'm not gonna do. There's not much really going on in terms of actual story. You are forced to take on the role of just one of the sisters, only one. As you go and search for your lost father, which is BJ Blaskovich. He was kind of missing somewhere in the Paris area, in a futuristic make-believe scenario where Paris is invaded by Nazi forces. From the beginning, you get a little bit of background story uh, about the two sisters. Their kind of tough mother Good. who is training them in combat. Right. Also, you do get a background check and the game kind of explains who exactly Good. are the people in Paris uh, and why exactly are they helping their sisters. Of course, as usual, like in most Wolfenstein video games, they're resistance fighters. I find it very cool. Uh, that at the beginning of the game, uh, you are given for Very each lovely. character, each sister, choices and Super aptitudes, just like in an, an RPG where you get to choose their base skills. They're kind of opposite to each other, so one sister would be very different than the other, and they're kind of complementing one another by being different, but at the same time, these skills will help them in combat. It sounds complicated, but it's not because I don't think it's going to actually make a difference in combat too much. What you choose really, uh, you know, between all the fighting and all the shooting, but it's nice that they kind of implement it. It's a very cool feeling that you get. It's not like you're blindly choosing one sister versus uh, the other. You actually get choices that will kind of mold her character and... It has chemistry. Even when you are not in a cutscene, the Blaskovich sisters have great banter and that rude sort of sarcastic remarks that adds feeling to the game 
it feels like you're not alone you are actually playing with someone even though you might be playing with the sister ai instead of a co-op friend their relationship is very much important and it feels alive again this has been greatly implemented in terms of mechanics in game if one sister dies in combat so will the other there is no continuing without one of the sisters keep that lovely little sister of yours alive that's all i'm saying they share the same life kind of and it tells you that from the beginning you must stay alive together or else you will fail the mission and you're gonna have to start all over again you get two very cool skills at the beginning uh they act like support throughout a movement and emoji um, type of, uh, of skill for example if you hit thumbs up when you are around your sister you get to choose from the beginning either to give her more hp or armor let's say you're you're fighting you're taking sh shots you know you're getting hit from all sorts of places all of a sudden if you're next to your sister and you do have to be in her vicinity hit thumbs up t on your keyboard if you're playing on on a computer and it will give you whatever you decide, either armor or HP. And it has this cool little voiceover trick that they do. It's, it feels like chemistry. It feels like it's really there happening. It feels alive. And this is an excellent co-op mode implementation. You get to know the two Blaskovich sisters, Sophia and Jessica. At first, for their more human and kind of normal, gentle side. Look, so Nazi. What do you think? We gotta kill him. Oh, shit, Arthur, what's the plan? Try to get a clean shot from up here? You're so not ready for this. You'll miss the shot. Shut up, I am ready. Yeah. yeah we should try to... Try to get up close. Climb down there. I sneak up from the left. You sneak up from the right. Corner him and kill him. Man, are you crying? I'm fucking crying. A little nauseous is all. You could have flaked out on me? Hell no. Let's go then, little Miss Blaskowitz. But let's just say they kind of grow up very fast. Cigarette? No, 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 no. You should pull it down into your lungs like this. Now you. <laughs> Combat. Well, I have only played with about five different weapons, I believe. If there are more than that, I guess they will be unlocked within a game, but I don't think there are more than six in total weapons uh, in this game. When these weapons are upgraded and you can change all sorts of uh, things to the weapons from the magazine, the stock, uh, the iron sight, etc. When they are fully upgraded, they still feel like they're not doing enough damage. Most of the times, the AI enemies will do so much more damage to you than you can actually do to them. Taking this in consideration, the game almost forces you to have a great co-op partner. Anyone that sucks and basically is not able to keep up will lose you the game very fast. For example, if you're kind of playing on public and random people join your game and they're not good at it, the moment your partner gets hit, you must go revive them. If you don't do that, the game is over. You share the same life, like I said before. Basically, keep your co-op companion alive. There are six level difficulties that you can change at any time. Not a problem. You don't have to start the game all over or anything like that. And most of them, for me, I just find them kind of not that important. Because the only level of difficulty that you need to be playing on is hard. I know, but hear me out. Medium, at medium, the AI is kind of a bit foolish, kind of a bit dumb. They don't react that fast, and sometimes they kind of forget to shoot back. They're just there, kind of staring at you, standing still, not doing much. At hard, things change drastically. The AI is more responsive, and you actually feel like you're playing the video game that you should have been playing from the beginning. 
anything above hard it's a waste of time because i think that it's too much and the ai is just way too aggressive so keep it at around hard to actually experience good combat something else that you kind of need to keep in mind you do have different approaches like you can go stealthy or you can go loud and the ai being kind of hard to spot and this is more like a graphics thing uh, the way the colors are the way the shadows you will have hard time spotting the enemies especially if you want to go kind of like in a stealth sort of situation uh, and of course it takes a few seconds for you to pinpoint where they're shooting at, especially if they're shooting from the balcony or anything like that. I just wish that the enemy AI would have been more easier to spot. I thought pushing the, the resolution from 1080 to 2K will make a difference. Maybe it would, you know, add more sharpness and more visibility, but it kind of didn't. These are the graphics. I just don't know how to explain it. It's hard to spot enemies at time, and I wish it was a bit different. We did it, Soap! Holy shit! Jump! Can we make it? How the fuck did I go? Skills. If you are playing below hard, anything to medium which is kind of boring or casual you don't really need the skills you have three different skill tree preferably if you're playing with a friend you should take different skills so you can complement each other but that's not a story anything above medium skills are the only thing keeping you alive uh, they're actually much more important than weapons and like i said Weapons don't do that much, that much damage. I don't know why. It like it feels like you're shooting the bad guys, but they're not getting down very fast. Skills will make the difference in how you take your enemies down, and it will just kind of speed up the progress through the level. However, weapon upgrades, they're easy because you get coins, quite a lot of them, and you can pretty much from the beginning of the game upgrade quite, quite a lot of weapons. When it comes to skills, you don't get that many skills and you constantly need to level up. So you're probably going to be able to complete a build somewhere at the end of the game. Keep that in mind. Graphics. I am loving the optimization. Whatever they did with this game, absolutely brilliant. Why? Because the game runs very, very smooth. In all fairness, this is not an open world video game. All of the fighting and all the scenes are done in close quarters. You don't get to load a lot into the video memory. This is kind of tight and it focuses on small areas. Players that have low end computers can easily play this. This is not a heavy resource game. Probably most mediocre gaming computers can hold 60 frames per second at 1080, if not even more. You can push the visuals at ultra. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't really make any difference. And it bothers me that it doesn't. From ultra to high, even in medium, the game kind of looks the same for some reason. You only see differences if you go above... 1080 in 2k you will see differences uh in and above 2k but nothing too impressive and yes all this time you can still hold 60 frames per second because this has been incredibly optimized and it runs very well and this is very good that they kind of did it this way i guess it has its ups and downs you're not getting eye candy but at the same time think about it like this this is a full-on co-op video game build for co-op uh, from the scratch, from the ground up. You might be the gamer in the family who invests a lot of money into a gaming computer, but your friend, your brother, your sister, anyone close to you that you want to play this game with might not be. So you're kind of forcing them to have a very powerful computer in, or in order to play with them, which is not the case. Right? With the Deluxe Edition with Buddy Pass, you can 
play with anyone you want without them having to purchase a copy of the video game. This is absolutely unique. It is unique. I don't know if it's ever been done before, certainly not by Bethesda or any other major company. It is a brilliant feature. And if this game would have been this demanding, like let's say Assassin's Creed Odyssey, those players playing with you, those those friends of yours, will have a very hard time, but this is not the case. Everyone can pick this game up. You can play it on a laptop. You can play it on low-end machines. It's fine. And I'm not even joking. Like, this thing just holds 60 frames per second most of the time. However, there is a downside, like I said, because it doesn't look that good. I feel like when I'm looking at the buildings and, and the weapon details, etc., it feels like 2014, 2014-ish. Nothing like this feels like 2019 when it comes to graphics. These are all graphics, and it really kind of shows. I know that later this year, we don't know exactly when an update will come, which will implement uh, NVIDIA Ray Tracing. For those of you who do have RTX graphics cards, rejoice, I guess, because it will only improve the visual slightly at best. I mean, let's face it, the character details weapon model details uh, you know building details environment any type of object they will stay exactly the same you're just slapping on some ray tracing and that's it again the details are not going to be that great but hey overall you get to play this on low-end computers and it will run very very good so and i don't think that people jumping into this video game expect that much eye candy this isn't god of war this isn't nothing done on console this isn't your assassin's creed odyssey and 4k looks absolutely spectacular this is nothing like that this is you enjoying some shooting time with your best friend and you're just kind of running amok on the whole thing so it doesn't really bother me but it doesn't have all that eye candy although it would have been great to see newer graphics audio the audio is mediocre at best i believe there are four or three type of different eq that you get to choose from in the audio section either you play with headsets on or you have a 5.1 7.1 surround sound i have a 5.1 myself there is not much of a difference all that it does it kind of reduces uh, the mids and the highs so when something blows up around you is not going to appear so loud i play it i play it at medium because i use headphones and i don't want to destroy my ears but other than that i didn't see any kind of differences between these type of different presets EQs. This is not PUBG, okay? You don't need to hear enemy footstep, etc. And this is also not Assassin's Creed Odyssey when you get that high range audio. When you're riding your horse through a forest and you get to hear, you know, wind sound, you have background music, animals in a distance, etc. It, it's not like that, okay? This is a much more simple type of audio experience. And I kind of recommend you to go in the middle because at high, the explosions and the gunshots will probably damage your hearing if you're playing with headsets like me. So again, nothing impressive here. When it comes to gameplay, it's, it's very, very good. Again, if you're playing it with a friend the way this game was kind of meant to be, you don't care about a lot of aspects that you may find, for example, in Metro, right? The series Metro are kind of focused on a very heavy single player experience. This is a shoot 'em up type of video game and the gameplay is gonna be fantastic as long as you're having fun and laughs with your best friend and you're enjoying a good time, right? But it does have its drawbacks. Sometimes it can get repetitive, especially when you're doing the same missions all over and over again. Can you go on the main quests and just ignore everything else? No, you cannot. Your character will level up, thus it's going to get a skill point that you can invest in your skills. Missions will have different level of difficulty. And let's say if the mission is for recommended level 20 and you're level 16, 
you're not going to be able to, to finish that mission because your weapons will do absolutely no damage. You need to level up. You cannot go tackle the first, uh, you know, main story quest missions. You are forced to go a little bit on the side and level up before you can go on the main mission. This is great. It kind of gives you a lot to do, but it can run into repetition. I've counted about five different areas, five different combat maps, five different places that you can go to. I guess there's more than that theoretically, but they're kind of like five places where you can go to. Other than that, they start kind of looking the same and they kind of start repeating. Plus, there are quests which send you back and forth between one of these five places. So, you, let's say you've been to um, an area of Paris called Berlin, Young Berlin or something like that. You're going to have to go back to it like one hour from now on when some NPC will give you another quest. So you're basically going back and forth teleporting uh, throughout the metro system. There's You go to out of the ground, you, you look at the map, there's a metro system, you click on it and you kind of teleport between places. And you're constantly going through the same places all over and over. Thing is, when you're there and you're reloading an area, the enemies will spawn once again. And I found myself getting bored and kind of running between the enemies so I can go as fast as possible where the, the quest shows me that I have, uh, you know, something to do. The enemies will chase you down, but not too much at the point where if you're fast, they will stay behind and as long as you kind of left that area they're not going to follow you and it's going to be okay i'm not telling you this so you can skip on combat at first it's awesome when you're taking on it but at times it can get repetitive and it can get a little bit boring very very important in terms of gameplay you pick up a quest uh from the catacombs which are underneath paris and whatnot and this is where the resistance is held up when you are on the field, when you are topside, wherever you're going, you get additional quests while you're doing those quests. Let's say you're, you, are, you have to go to someone's office to search for clues about your missing father. In mid-mission, let's say, you're going to get a sound cue from headquarters telling you that there is a mad scientist about and you need to go and assassinate him. At first, this is very exciting and you feel like it's, oh my God, something is happening around me. I need to address that at first. After that, you kind of get tired of killing the same freaking mad scientist a hundred times or planting explosive, uh, sabotaging a certain vehicle, a car. It says a car, blah, 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 is next to you, go sabotage it. And you kind of have to do that like a hundred times over and over. It keeps repeating itself and you will be probably ignoring all of these. The game gives you, I guess, for, you know, so you won't get bored after the main story is done. Daily, weekly and monthly quests. Of course, you get rewards from them, etc., etc. I have not yet found out if there is a level cap, like how high you can go with your level, no idea. Uh, but the idea of the daily and so on quests, um, of course, they're going to be repetitive. And I guess it kind of gives you something to do in game uh, when all of this is finished. It kind of gives you an incentive to come back to it. Well, I don't think this is kind of like the case because there's just so much you can play from this video game. Once it's done, it's done. And I feel like just enjoy it, have fun with it. And when it's done, the story is over. Kind of that's it. Uninstall it. Because I don't feel like you're going to be grinding this for, I don't know, 200 hours or more of gameplay, which is ridiculous. I feel like the melee weapons do way too much damage. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, they kind of wanted to implement this stealth thing situation where you melee them and you just take them out in one second. Versus the actual weapons, you know, like a semi-automatic powerful rifle that you just upgraded that doesn't feel like it's doing that much damage versus when you're throwing a knife. Like when you're throwing the knife, you can like one hit kill them. It's not even a headshot or anything like that. But when you're unloading two magazines worth of bullets into a guy and he just keeps coming back, 
it's a bit ridiculous. I feel like the melee weapons are way too powerful. I'm not complaining. You can always throw a knife and end them, and you only have limited amount of ammunition to your melee, just like anything else. But I just feel like it's a bit exaggerated. There is a feeling, because I picked up on it being years ago an MMORPG type of player, there is a feeling of grinding in there and there is a feeling of farming. But this will not ruin your game. Again, just focus on the main missions, do a little bit of side so you can get a little bit of experience. And in no time, I, I would reckon 15 hours worth of solid gameplay, you will be able to finish the game in its entire progression. Of course, not doing all the side quests, absolutely not. Just enjoy a good solid experience in around 15 hours of gameplay. Uh, but there is that I noticed and I picked up on that farming experience. You can replay and sometimes you can go back to the same area and you kind of find different things where they, they like coins, etc. Just reload the map, go back to it and do it all over again. And it feels a little bit like farming. Like if you don't have enough coins, you can always farm an, an area. You can go back to it, et cetera, et cetera. But I haven't done that. But I just picked up on it. I was like, hmm, can this be farming? And at some point, I guess it could. But it will not be enough in order for you to ruin the game. There is also a um, kind of in-game purchase you can unlock cosmetics like suits and etc for your character and skin uh, for your weapons with golden bars or with coin. Uh, if you don't have the patience to get enough coin and you want to unlock a certain skin and this is only from a cosmetic point of view, you can buy gold bars and they have different packs for it. Like 5 euro, 20 euros. I don't exactly remember like how many euros, but you can purchase those. Again, they are just for cosmetics. And I guess this is something else that they can make money off. You are not required to buy these things. Uh, and most of the times you can just unlock them with coin because you do get a fair amount of coin from this game. You don't need to farm anything else. They're, they're quite enough. All right, so just to wrap things up, I think like I feel like I've I've talked enough. Um, what do you get from this video game? Well, incredible co-op because this is the name of the game. Well, the name of the game is actually Wolfenstein: Young Blood, but it also should be full-on co-op. We don't have enough co-op video games, especially the ones that rely on first-person shooting and story. Yes, you do get Call of Duty Black Ops 3, where you can completely do the entire campaign with a friend, but that is not, that's more like a gimmick. You can jump in and play with that friend, but it's not kind of made the way this one is, with co-op intention in mind, with the chemistry that these two characters have with each other. Yes, you can even play uh, Far Cry in co-op quests and all that, of course, but again, those are kind of like a multiplayer side add-on sort of a thing. This is full-fledged shoot 'em up story co-op scenario, and it's brilliant. What makes it even more like insanely good, and I wish all the game companies will implement this, not just Bethesda, the buddy pass system. You literally don't have to purchase the game. You can play completely with someone else. I find this mind-blowing and it's this is the opposite of greed. Greed would be what EA Game is doing, whatever. This is the opposite. This is very, very well implemented place. I know you need to get the deluxe edition, which is like eight euros more. Like it's it's a measly eight euros more. It's not like you're paying 60 euros. And if you want to play with your friend, you got to pay 60 again because he needs to get a copy of it. No, this is has the buddy pass system implemented. This is huge this is how all the games should be this is the opposite of greed this is a game made for gamers this is how it should be this is how games were on console a back few years ago at the time of xbox 360 where you could just have a friend come on over and you could couch co-op stuff if you had two controllers a bit different because you need a separate computer to play this one but again, you don't have to purchase it. You can just share your games with your best friends and playing together and sharing. This is what 
it's all about you know this is what the community is all about this is what we all want to do kudos much appreciation from Bethesda from implementing this and it just works flawlessly if you're looking for a deep immersion uh, experience kind of single player feeling this is not it this is not your Assassin's Creed Odyssey this is not any single player with amazing graphics and sound and all of that and many many cutscenes and just storytelling it's not kind of like that it does have a storytelling young blood but you're probably not going to care much about it this is full-on co-op have fun shoot bad guys up upgrade your weapons upgrade your class system and keep it rolling with an adorable powerful dynamic female characters Well, that's it. If I left anything out, which I'm sure I did, and maybe I didn't cover everything, and you'd like to know more, or maybe you have some ideas, leave them in the comment section. Liked it if you thought that you can make a wise purchase via, you know, what I told you about this video game. If you haven't liked it, disliked it. Until next time, have a good one. Something out of Arthur and Kenneth. You built this thing? Yep. Who are Arthur and Kenneth? You're telling me you haven't read the covert adventures of Arthur Pennington and Kenneth Van Holshauser? Man, what rocket you've been living under? Here, take it. No time for reading fiction. So Arthur and Kenneth are super spies, right? And they go on. No, off. shut up, shut up. 